No one in nature can survive on its own. Or maybe it can. Some plant species have hermaphrodite flowers where both sexes coexist. In such cases, the male structures can fertilize the female parts of the same flower. The male individual contained in each single pollen grain of a self-compatible species will reach the ovary through a tube, the pollen tube, fertilizing an ovule therein. A self-pollination will be thus completed. This mechanism ensures plant reproduction even when other pollen sources are scarce. But this kind of pollination doesn't promote genetic diversity among the offspring. Both male and female progenitors share the same set of genes. But many plants have developed strategies to promote cross-pollination. One of the most extended is the transference of pollen between faraway flowers using the wind. It is called anemophily. But this system is far from perfect. Most of the pollen gets lost in the way, resulting in a considerable waste of energy for the plant. Fortunately, though, nature has provided some plants with much better pollinators. Some bees can carry pollen in a specific spot of their bodies and place it later on the stigma of another flower. The waste of pollen is avoided and the system becomes more efficient. This kind of pollination promotes the pollen transfer between different plants much more accurately than the wind does. Through insect pollination, ovules are fertilized by a mixture of pollen from several flowers. The genetic diversity of the offspring will be substantially increased. Indeed, we must open our eyes to the role of interactions between different organisms in nature. They are certainly behind the huge diversity around us.